Hi guys, thanks for joining me once again. It's time for another video. Okay, my name is Peter. If you haven't been here before, this channel is called Thailand Bound and I speak about all things Thailand. Today I have a guest. I'm going to be speaking with Peter from Thai Legal Protection. I've done several videos with him before. We've made several videos together and they seem to be quite popular. The last video we made was how can a foreigner open up a Thai bank account if they're only on a, tour visa, a tourist visa? Because that's something that has become very, very difficult now. That video was very, very popular. And today we're going to be talking about general travel hacks to Thailand, things you should do, things you shouldn't do. We're going to talk about medicals, uh, medical coverage, emergencies, uh, phones, uh, just lots of different things. Peter's going to be doing most of the talking, so that's good news for you guys. And uh, let's bring him straight in and see what he's got to say today. Hello, Peter. How are you? Thanks for joining me once again. Yet another video. Hi, Peter. How are you today? I'm good. I'm always good. Right, so today's video, you heard me talking on the intro there. Uh, we're going to be talking about various subject matter. Um, I'll let you I'll let you take it away. What would you like to talk about first? Because the whole point of this video is giving people tips and not it, mm -hmm. it's a kind of things to do and not to do. What, what, where should we start mm -hmm. with this, do you think? Well, I think, uh, you know, for the tourists, I think we should start with a few ideas uh, that'll make their stay a little bit easier. Okay, sure. sure. Uh, so one item that I get a lot of questions about is, you know, many countries allow you to enter Thailand with absolutely no visa. But sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the airline and also depending on immigration, they ask you to book an onward or return ticket. They ask you to make sure you have enough travel funds, uh, you know, for when you mm -hmm. arrive and then make sure that you've got accommodation. So these mm -hmm. things are in place to kind of make sure that the tourists that are coming in are legitimate tourists. So they're not going to ask everybody these questions. Some airlines won't let you board unless you can prove to them that you've got an onward or return flight. And others just leave it up to immigration when you arrive. So if you come here with no visa and you're asked any of these questions uh, after you arrive, at Thailand immigration, just make sure that you're able to show them a return or onward flight. Make sure that you've got 20,000 baht in cash or equivalent in foreign currency and make sure you can inform them about where you're staying. Yeah. I mean, I, they've got rid of the form that you used to fill in on the airplane uh, that used to ask you where you stay and mm -hmm. the, the address and contact details and mm -hmm. everything. They, they've got rid of that now to uh, speed up the mm -hmm. procedure. And all the years I've traveled, they've never really asked me about cash, but I suppose they kind of profile you when you're coming through. Mm -hmm. If you look like a guy who doesn't have any cash, then they might ask you, obviously, uh, I don't know, I, I don't look like a guy who's got lots mm -hmm. of cash, but obviously um, doing okay. Mm -hmm. What about this idea um, some people have, they want to stay here longer and they're not sure when they want to go back to their own country. So mm -hmm. what they do, mm -hmm. they are aware that they should have a, a either a return ticket or an ongoing ticket. So what they do, they buy what you call a, a kind of cheap throwaway ticket. So what they'll do, they'll mm -hmm. come from, say, the States or the Europe somewhere, mm -hmm. and then they'll have an onward ticket with a date going out to somewhere like Vietnam, mm -hmm. which is kind of $40, $50, uh, mm -hmm. and they just, they're prepared to lose that so they can stay the extra. Is that sure. something you'd recommend or not? Uh, I would actually recommend doing that as opposed to using one of those booking kind of booking service websites where you mm. book the ticket or you make a reservation, but it's not actually a paid ticket. Mm. So immigration is kind of catching on to that. Some guys still swear by that, but it's much better to do what you suggested because we don't know if immigration is ever going to, you know, t take note of those companies and maybe not you allow you to use those anymore. So booking that cheap ticket to Cambodia or cheap ticket to Vietnam that you're willing to lose is much better idea, I think. Yeah, because I think a lot of people don't realize it's changed a lot here in Thailand. Now, in the old days, I'm talking as recently as maybe 10, 15 years ago, but mm -hmm. earlier on, you could do border runs every month for a year and nobody would say anything. Mm -hmm. You weren't really checked. They didn't really check things too much. Not everything mm -hmm. was computerized, but, you know, they're really mm -hmm. on the ball now. And the next thing I wanted to ask you, do you remember in the old days, you know, if your visa ran out tomorrow and you thought, well, you know what, I want to stay three more days. You didn't worry about it because it's just a case of, well, I'll pay for mm -hmm. it. was 500 baht a day. I think it still is 500 baht mm -hmm. a day. Fine. So if you're mm -hmm. in a position and you met somebody, a nice girl or something, you want to stay an extra three, four days, you thought, you know what, I'll just pay the 1500, 2000 mm -hmm. when I go out and there's no, no uh, complications mm -hmm. from that. I mean, they've tightened down a lot on that, haven't they? Sure. So, you know, a lot of guys actually don't 
find themselves in that specific situation where you, you know, that you just explained, it's more like, uh, you know, they couldn't get a cheap flight to leave during that 30 days that they are going to be here. So what's common knowledge is that for years, everybody's known that you should carry your passport around with you because if the police stop you anywhere, uh, uh, you know, you could be in a nightclub, the police come in for a, a routine check. And mm -hmm. you're, you're like you said earlier, if you're on overstay, you'll get arrested. But what about in this scenario that you're not on an overstay, but you don't have your passport with you, you don't have any photocopy, you don't even have a, a picture, mm -hmm. a photograph on your phone. They come in, they do all the checks and everything. They ask you to produce your ID and you haven't got it because it's in the hotel room. You're not mm -hmm. overstayed, you just mm -hmm. have you're having you're not carrying okay. anything. What action would they actually take in most cases? Okay. Well, whether you're on overstay or not, what they're gonna want to do is they're gonna assess the situation and decide if they suspect you of doing something wrong or being on overstay. And based on that assessment, they may ask you to go to your condo and get your passport or call a friend to go and get it or ask the hotel that you're in to go to your room and get the passport. And then maybe they'll send somebody to pick it up. But this basically situations where they've detained people until they could pr produce their passport. And that means that maybe they might not even allow you to go back and get it. They may ask you to find somebody that can do it for you. Okay, so let me throw in another difficulty into the mix there. So same situation, mm -hmm. except you've put your passport in your hotel room safe and you don't want to give mm -hmm. anybody the password because even mm -hmm. if the hotel could come there, you've got a wad of cash in, you've got cash, credit cards, mm -hmm. and you just don't want to risk anything going missing by the hotel staff who can easily say, mm -hmm. well, I didn't touch anything. There's no proof. So if you weren't willing to give a safe number and your, your passport's in the safe, um, what's the other alternative if the police have you and they want the proof? Would they be prepared to accompany you back to the hotel? Well, I think that depends on the officer and the situation. So we can't say 100% if they would allow that. But what I can tell you is that these safes in the hotel have an override that the hotel uh. staff can use for these types of situations. And unfortunately, you would have to go along with it if that was the case and trust mm. that the hotel staff wouldn't take any belongings out of there. They would just get your passport. And so basically in the big, large hotels, these things don't normally happen. And often there's times when people say things are missing and when they're not for like, you know, bogus insurance claims and mm. stuff like that. So it's just basically we have to play the situation by year. The police will, will basically tell you what they're willing to accept and what they're not. Mm -hmm. And it's very unlikely that they'd kind of just arrest you and take you to a police to a to a jail or a police station. There'd be a there'd be a get out of jail clause. Forgive the pun. You, you, somehow to get your passport out of your hotel or, or condo. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. police understand things, and it, you know it basically depends on the situation where they've asked you your passport. So if mm -hmm. you're in a club and there's other people using illegal substances in that club, mm -hmm. then they might be more strict. But if it's just mm -hmm. a routine check maybe for uh for other things that are happening then they may not be so strict like if it's if, if the check is geared more towards the club uh mm. that's uh, you know following the rules and not more about the, the patrons in that club then they may not be so strict so it just depends on the situation yeah. Okay, because I know sometimes they'll go into a nightclub or a bar and they're not really interested in, in the particular, uh, the bar or the nightclub. They're more interested in the people who are in there to check ages and, mm -hmm. as you say, abusing mm -hmm. substances, that sort of thing. All right, mm -hmm. let's move on from that. So let's talk about some tips, tricks, downfalls, uh, positive things, negative things. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be one of these guys watching of, watching this and thinking, well, I've got no worries. I've been to Thailand 10 times, 20 mm -hmm. times. I know the ropes. Nothing will happen mm -hmm. to me. But you hear mm -hmm. stories all the time, don't you? Because you help guys out if they're members sure. to, your, to your company. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll talk about membership mm -hmm. at the end there because very very uh, mm -hmm. cheap. But you you've helped out a lot of guys who thought they knew mm -hmm. the ropes and they've they've got themselves in trouble or they've fallen into trouble through no fault of mm -hmm. their own. Can you give me mm -hmm. an example of some of the things that have actually happened where guys have had to call you and you know you, your company mm -hmm. has actually got them out of that mess? Sure. sure, yeah. So I'll give you one example from an experienced guy. And then one example from a newbie type of guy, just so you can okay. see what the differences are, right? Sure, so, sure. so you have an experienced guy who's traveled to Thailand over many years, uh, knows the ropes as far as he's concerned. And one day they're driving their motorcycle along the road. And, and unfortunately, you know, somebody just runs out in front of their motorcycle and there's an accident. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that accident is going to cause 
you know, big, big, big problems for that person. So unfortunately, in this scenario, the person that was that ran out in front of the person's motorcycle ended up being deceased. And oh. so because of that, that person who thought that they knew everything was all of a sudden in a situation where he had no control over what was going on. So he obviously called our emergency line, and that's all about all I can say so far on that matter. Uh, but, you know, he called our emergency line and we were able to help him, you know, get himself in a stable situation where then he could then deal with this situation from a legal standpoint. So that would is be this, the example, you know, for some, an experienced guy. Okay. Is this something that recently happened or we're talking years ago? Or? No, a few months ago. Okay. And is, is it still ongoing? Is there any outcome yet? Uh, yes, there's an outcome, but I just can't talk about it. But I guess I could tell you that the outcome was in, in favor of the, of the, of the expat. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And what about the newbie uh, example you were going to give me? Uh, okay, well, you know, it's very simple. We get calls to our line all the time from newbies. Uh, and, and, they, and they basically vary, you know, they vary from my, I gave a girl some money, she's supposed to pay me back, or I lent her money under false pretenses. Or I, you know, I went into a bar and they're accusing me of not paying my bill. Uh, you know, so for these types of situations, how we get involved is we just kind of talk to the other party. And basically our goal is to calm the situation down and offer a, you know, a, you know, offer a way for the parties to come to an agreement. You know, so I guess one of the main things I want to get across to the guys is whenever you find yourself in a dispute, the last thing you want to do is raise your voice and lose your temper. It's not going to get you anywhere. Calm down and try to deal with the situation, you know, in a more diplomatic way. Okay. Well, that's interesting. We can, as I say, we can talk more about your membership at the end there. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Let, why don't we turn it around? Let's make it a bit more of a positive video now and, and tell us uh, some of the travel hacks that people can do before they get out here or on arrival. That'll just make their whole experience a lot better. What sort of things would you advise? Okay. So the first thing I would do is is take a small card, may, maybe a little bit bigger than a name card or similar to that size. And mm -hmm. I basically just on that card, I would put down a couple of emergency contacts and I would put down the travel insurance company name and policy number and contact details. OK, put that on a little card, laminate it, stick it in your wallet that way. If you're in a situation where you're not able to provide that information because you're in an accident and you're unconscious, then the authorities will have that card that they could re refer to. So that's a big thing that I would recommend mm. that everybody to do. And that's like a, a hack for the tourist. Um, so in the situation, let's talk about the hospitals a little bit, because one of the mm -hmm. questions that people ask me is if you had an accident and whether you're insured or you're not insured, but you don't have that information on you, the ambulance comes, take you to hospital and you're not able to mm -hmm. communicate with them for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they're not going to just uh, do nothing. They're going to help you out. How, what do they mm -hmm. do? Because, you know, here it's, it is a business, mm -hmm. a hospital, and you do have to pay for treatment. Sure. So if, you're, if you arrive and you're unconscious and you don't have any proof on you, what, what do they normally do? Yeah, so if it's a life-threatening illness by law, they have to stabilize you and treat you. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, in the you know, in uh, in Thailand, there have been cases that have been reported every once in a while where a hospitals ha you know refuse treatment. Uh, but but you know, ninety-nine point nine percent of the time by law, they're supposed to follow that protocol and treat you and stabilize you. And then after that, they would sort out all the particulars of whether you have insurance or not. Okay, so let's uh, let's ask another way then. So what happens? Same scenario, except it's not critical. Mm -hmm. The guy turns up, he's able to speak, but he's kind of he can't really walk properly. He can't get up and get in a taxi and go somewhere. You know, he needs treatment, mm -hmm. but he can talk to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he says, "Look, I don't have any travel insurance. Uh, I'm not sure how much I've got to pay for it." I mean, would they mm -hmm. flat refuse him or want proof? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a very good question, and it's a difficult one to answer. So it's based on each individual case. And each individual situation will depend on, on, you know, the outcome will depend on that. And the hospital will make an assessment, basically, of the patient on how serious their illness is, uh, how much it's going to cost. But having a Thai person 
available to talk with the hospital in situations like this is very valuable. So whether you've got friends or family members or you're a member of Thai Legal Protection, these are the scenarios that will help you in situations like that. You know what I mean? So whether you're a member of or not is a different story, but, but this is very important that if you have a Thai person to help you out. Yeah, because something I haven't mentioned uh, within your company, um, you have a you have Thai people obviously who are fluent in English, mm -hmm. and if it was a situation where you needed a Thai person at the hospital to talk mm -hmm. to the hospital, it had to be a face to face. You have actually got people who could go down there and, and discuss things, right? Yeah. So there's basically two options. You know, we would make under the membership a phone call on the member's behalf to the hospital, and if it required us to go down there, there would be a small charge. And it would depend on the time of day. So if it was an emergency situation, then the member might call our emergency line in the middle of the night. And if it was urgent, yes, we would go down there. Okay. Uh, if it's during the day, uh, we would make an appointment and go down there if it was required. Yes. Yeah. And I heard, I don't know if this is true, because I've never been incapacitated mm -hmm. here, luckily, touch wood, in mm -hmm. Thailand. But I've heard that if they, uh, when the ambulance picks you up, they just take you to the nearest hospital. It could be the best hospital in Thailand, or it could be a government hospital, whichever one's nearest, they take you there, mm -hmm. and then they might transfer you later. Is that true or not? It's true if you're not able to communicate with them. But if you are able to communicate with them, like, for example, expats might be covered under the Social Security program. And that means that you're only allowed to use that at one hospital. And it's generally close to your home anyway. So you, if you can communicate that, then they will take you to the hospital that you have your coverage at, for example, in just that th situation. Sure. I was just thinking to say if you took a trip to Phuket and come off a motorbike mm -hmm. or something, you know, you live in Bangkok, but you come off a motorbike in Phuket, for mm -hmm. instance, and obviously you're not close to your home. Mm -hmm. uh, in that sort of situation, then I suppose they just have to take you to the nearest hospital. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're able to communicate with them and you request them to take you to a specific hospital, they'll just take you to the nearest one. Correct. And is there, um, I don't know if you can answer this one, but is there a, a health insurance company here in Thailand that you actually recommend from your company or, or do you not do that? Um, well, I'm just going to give you the criteria that I would recommend. And the criteria is that if that health insurance company or travel insurance company is able to pay the claim to the hospital directly, as opposed to you having to be able to, you know, pay it up front and then claim it afterwards. Back, yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that's very important. And for travel insurance, it's very important that you have a travel insurance company that will cover you thing, you know, for things like emergency evacuation. So let's say you've had a heart attack. So the hospital, uh, is going to treat you for that heart attack and the travel insurance company should cover just that emergency situation. Mm -hmm. And then when you're stabilized, there should be some type of emergency evac to your home country where you can mm -hmm. continue the treatment after you're stabilized. So those are two really important points. Okay, but there isn't a, a, a specific company that you say, look, this is who we use and we know they're good or, or is that not something you do? Well, in Thailand, it's more about the brokers because they all use the same companies. So, yes, I can recommend it's called one to go insurance brokers. And for health okay. insurance, I would, you know, fully recommend Pacific Cross. And there's a couple of reasons why. The first reason is that you'll never have a problem uh, making the claim with them and having them pay the hospital. But you mm. may have a little bit of difficulty qualifying for the insurance. But if you qualify for Pacific Cross, then of course you'll you'll have no problems getting that coverage paid for up front because this insurance company deals with the hospitals directly. So yeah. and their vetting process is very strict. So once you've got their coverage, you'll have no problems. Yeah, I was going to say I've had experience with them, personal experience, and their their uh, vetting uh, is very very strict, much stricter than anybody else. I mean, a lot of insurance mm -hmm. companies you basically sign sign and put a date and insured, but then when it comes to payout time, they're not so mm -hmm. keen to uh, pay out. Sure. I know with Pacific mm -hmm. Cross, um, yeah, they do pay out. That's what that's what I've heard. But you've mm -hmm. got to get past that uh, mm -hmm. initial hurdle of the criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes here, let's get away from the medical side of things. Is there any kind mm -hmm. of things you would recommend as far as uh, phones, internet, uh, cards that mm -hmm. will help them while they're here, loading up certain mm -hmm. cards that are safe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for your mobile phone and money exchange, right? So you can usually uh, get your money exchanged uh, at TT. I, th I think the name of the company is TT. They seem to give the best rates. 
so that's a good hack. You know, try not to do the exchanges at the airport because the rates won't be so good. Uh, second of all, uh, the mobile phone companies. So they're all really good. I really can't recommend one over the other. It just depends which one is more convenient for you. You know, mm -hmm. because what a lot, a lot of what a lot of people will say comments in this video now is a lot of people swear by super rich when they come in through the airport. Mm -hmm. They say they give the best mm -hmm. rates, um, mm -hmm. but I've seen super super rich outlets in other areas. Like there's one at Ma mm -hmm. Makassan um, Rail Link Station there, mm -hmm. and there rate wasn't as good as the rate they were giving in the airport mm -hmm. I, and i i mm -hmm. do know a lady on sukhumvit who gives you know if not a better the mm -hmm. same rate as them so it, sure. it, it is a case of looking around but if they do change at the mm -hmm. airport uh, as i say a lot of people swear by super rich what about things mm -hmm. like cards that you would load up that you can use while you're here mm -hmm. okay well this is more for the expats that are already here or maybe a long-term tourist that has some you know close ties right so there's true money wallet okay so true just money wallet, yeah so true money wallet it allows you to pay electronically at 7-eleven which is really nice okay mm -hmm. so what happens is if you've got a thai bank account you can basically load up true money wallet and then you can go into any 7-eleven and pay electronically the second thing that they have available is like a virtual mastercard so in other words a lot of guys are very security conscious and they don't want to use their their credit card or their Thai debit card online to buy things. So they'll use this one instead and they'll just mm. load it up and use it as, as they need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, yeah. um, the true money one is a great one. I, I've recently applied for it myself and I, I'll tell you what, what, like you said about 7-Eleven because mm -hmm. I, like everybody else here, here now, it's becoming a mm -hmm. little bit of a cashless society and you can, most mm -hmm. of us now who live here, we don't use cash, mm -hmm very much even the the bars restaurants everywhere you can pay with mm -hmm. your phone and a lot of people mm -hmm. watching this are probably thinking well that's a bigger places but small thai uh, hairdressers and shops and restaurants they they'll still want cash but they don't they all do they all take i've never found anybody when i say scan i've never found anybody who says oh we don't do scan even small mm -hmm. places but the, the downside about it is everybody uses 7-eleven and if you live here mm -hmm. you're in 7-eleven every other, other day like mm -hmm. i am and they they don't take uh, you can't pay by scan and the only way you can do it without uh, money is to have a true mm -hmm. wallet and you know the problem yep. with 7-Eleven every time you go there you end up with a handful of change you forget to take mm -hmm. it the next time and you've got this bowl in your lounge I think everybody must have one with this huge sure. amount of one bark coins in it so mm -hmm. yeah you're right it's a, it's a good mm -hmm. good good um, tip there mm -hmm. uh, any, any others well other than going cashless which is what we just talked about so I don't want to get into that too much more but uh, let's say you're an expat and maybe you don't have a credit card and you don't want to use your Thai bank accounts number to buy things. So there's certain services that if you've got a DTEC SIM card, okay, you can pay for using your DTEC number. It's the only number that you can use this for. You can't do it with AAS. You can't do it with TrueMove. So mm -hmm. what that means is let's say you want to subscribe to Netflix. You want to subscribe to Spotify or, you, or YouTube Premium. You want to pay your Apple purchase with your with your phone number or your Google Play Store purchases. All these little subscription apps that we like to use here uh, all allow you to pay with your mobile phone. So Thais can use any of those services uh, with any mobile phone carrier, but foreigners right now it's only available with DTEC. Right, right. Okay, good tip there. So just what I just picked up on when you were saying about Netflix there, because it's something just slightly mm -hmm. different of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people sure. have said to me, because my account is still in the UK, and mm -hmm. if you join Netflix here, it's actually cheaper normally than your own com company, uh, mm -hmm. country. And people sure. say to me, why, why have you not just discontinued your account in the UK and opened up a new account in Thailand? Mm -hmm. You save a few hundred baht a month. But the mm -hmm. reason I haven't done it is because the viewing policy here on Netflix is a lot stricter than it is in Europe. Mm -hmm. And because I'm signed up to Netflix UK, I actually get to mm -hmm. watch a lot of um, programming that isn't available if you're on Netflix mm -hmm. Thailand. I don't know if viewers are aware of that, but that's that's another tip there. And if you go through a VPN as well, that, that's even better. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what I do, Pete, is I go with the Thai subscription instead of the Canadian one, and I just use a VPN to watch any of the shows that are back in Canada, or I can link it up to the UK. So mm -hmm. I actually go with the Thai subscription. I think I do the 189 baht per month option. It's, it's still an HD option. 
and I can yeah. watch it on my computer, on my Apple TV. It's all the same. Yeah. The the other reason that I've kept my UK uh, account, other than that, is because my daughters use it. You know, it's I've got mm. multi up to four TVs can watch it. So you know, just because oh, cool. I've left the UK, my daughter lives. Um, you know, she doesn't live with mm -hmm. the family anymore, uh, and my ex wife and daughter. You know, I, I still allow them access to it. Anyway, that's that's mm -hmm. a personal thing, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so look, we've uh, we're, we're coming to the end uh, now. So let me just ask mm -hmm. you, um, what what would be the briefly the top couple of tips you would give every anybody who comes here on things you know not the obvious things that everybody makes videos about like don't touch ties on the head don't um mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. don't disrespect the royal family all that sort. i'm not mm -hmm. talking about all that stuff but just things mm -hmm. you come here you think i'm gonna have two weeks of wild weeks in P patio mm -hmm. or i'm gonna have a you mm -hmm. know a week in bangkok and then i'm off to hawaii and just silly mistakes that people can make and not realize especially guys on their own is there any tips you'd sort of give them out of the norm I, um, you know what, it's pretty, pretty much all the same that what we talked about before. I, I think the best tip that I can give is just to be aware of Thai culture. It's difficult to, to, to think about that in places like Patty and Phuket because mm. there's all foreigners around you. But just keep in mind that there are still, it's still not your country. We're still guests in Thailand. And so, you know, even things like putting your feet up on a chair, maybe, in your condo while well, you have, you know, a Thai person over, stuff like that. You know, we all know these situations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't lose your temper unless, you know, you know, sometimes you can't help it. But under normal circumstances, don't lose your temper. Stay calm. The, 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 you know, just these types of things. Yeah. I, I've been in many of them situations and I can tell you honestly what works best. You're not going to win. Mm -hmm. Just bite your lip, walk away and live to mm -hmm. fight another battle. Mm -hmm. It always works for me anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the whole the whole point of this, I mean, if people, if you haven't come across uh, any of these videos before with Peter and myself, uh, the company's called Thai Legal Protection, and they actually offer a membership to anybody who's come in here. Um, it's not on any kind of contract, so you can come in. It's very, very cheap. I believe it's 799 baht. I will confirm that in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can come here. You can take out the membership. There's a 24-hour hotline there. If you end up in Lumpini Police Station at 3 o'clock in the morning, this company will be available on the end of a phone, and they can talk to the police, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, hospital hospitals everything like that and in fact because this is probably my fifth or sixth video uh with this company peter has very generously offered one of my members on thailand bound a free membership uh, how long would that run for peter the free membership it's going to run for a year peter Okay, so basically, I'm going to give that away on my next live stream. Um, I'm going to give away the free membership to one of my members, and I'll tell you more about that nearer the date on that particular live stream. Uh, but is there anything I've missed out about the membership, Pete? Well, I guess I'd just like to highlight a couple of points, uh, two for tourists and one for long-term expats. Sure. So for the tourists, the first one is the 24-hour emergency line that you mentioned already. And the second one is a new thing that we've been doing. So during this, this interview, Pete, I mentioned that, you know, the guys can, can uh, put that little card in their wallet with travel, you know, emergency contacts and insurance information. So we'll take that one step further. So you'll have a special medical card that we provide in your wallet. Uh, we'll get you to sign a consent form and it allows us to store and share that information to people uh you know like doctors uh ambulance drivers police officers uh after we verify their identity so that card will basically be there for you as a security blanket so let's say you're unconscious the ambulance driver calls up our our company oh you know what we have john smith here in the ambulance uh does he have any emergency contacts does he have insurance um, who should we contact, so on and so forth. And we'll just verify their identity and then we'll just provide all those details for for our members. Yep. Yeah, that's good to know. And the other thing, uh, it's also the smaller things in life. If you come out here and you want mm -hmm. to rent a condo and you get the contract in Thai and you don't want to just sign it, you can uh, give it to one of your Thai lawyers or one of your Thai uh, people who mm -hmm. speak good English and they'll go through the contract for the uh, the condo or the apartment that they're renting and they can check everything. So there's lots of little things like that involved in the membership. And I believe mm -hmm. um, you give out some kind of a list, I suppose, when people um, join, they have some kind of an information mm -hmm. pack or something. Yeah, so they get a welcome email and it has all the benefits. And I usually talk to all the members after they sign up and either before they've signed up or after they've signed up, I've 
got all the benefits in one very short, simple document for them to review as mm, well, too. Mm. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. Well, I, I you've provided me. I've got a, a kind of a one-minute clip now that was professionally made. It's basically about mm -hmm. your company and the services mm -hmm. that are offered. So I don't want to be one of these channels that just kind of – pushes out advertising all the time which mm -hmm. i normally don't but i'm gonna i'm gonna tag that onto the end of this video just so if people are interested that video is very mm -hmm. um professional and polished and it'll give people more of an idea of what your company is about and, and as mm -hmm. i say guys if you're a, a member or you're you're a member of my channel you could win yourselves a, a one-year free membership to tie legal protection mm -hmm. and that could help you out a lot Okay, Peter, that's it. Once again, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, no doubt I'll see you again. We'll, we've got some more videos planned. Uh, mm -hmm. The last one went down very well. I hope this one does. Uh, I know you're a very busy man, so I'll let you go. Thanks for your time. And uh, no problem. I, hope it's, I hope it's been enjoyable for you. Yes, it has. I always enjoy, uh, you know, reaching out to you and uh, keep trying to help some of your viewers out. So good. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Peter. Have a great day and uh, we'll catch up real, real soon. Welcome to the mesmerizing world of Thailand, where your dreams come alive. Today, we introduce your ultimate travel companion, Thai Legal Protection. It doesn't matter if you're a tourist or an expat. Here's why you absolutely need this. Imagine this, you're in a foreign country, and suddenly, a crisis strikes. You're lost, but guess what, we've got your back. With our 24-7 emergency line, help is just a call away and our English-speaking experts are ready to assist you. Register your emergency contacts and travel insurance info, ensuring your loved ones are notified promptly and the hospital is aware of your insurance coverage. Carry our wallet-sized medical card. It's a tiny card that makes a huge difference. Handling legal issues abroad can be intimidating. Different languages, unfamiliar laws, it's like a puzzle. But remember, you're never alone with us. Whether it's a car accident, a legal dispute, reviewing a condo lease before you sign, or navigating complex immigration matters, we've got your back, no matter where you are. And here's the best part. Thai legal protection is incredibly affordable, at just 795 baht a month. No contracts, cancel any time. So, why hesitate? Join Thai legal protection today and journey with unwavering confidence because your peace of mind is our top priority. Visit our website or reach out to us to become a member and ensure a stress-free journey.